Kia ora and welcome into another episode of the Kiwi Football Fix. We shine a spotlight on everything New Zealand football right here, right now. Very shortly we'll be joined by Football Ferns forward Paige Satchel, but immediately... Look who it is. It's Auckland City FC head coach Jose Figuera. Great to see you, Jose. Thanks for ke- coming in and, and spending some time with me. No, great. Always a pleasure to chat. And uh, yeah, it's been been a few years since we've uh, since we've met. So um, yes. yeah, great to be here. Yeah, if there's time, we'll uh, we'll tell you the sordid details of when we uh, we last saw each other. But yeah. first of all, Jose, uh, it's been about a couple of weeks since the news came out that uh, Auckland City FC would not be sending a team to the uh, the Club World Cup in Qatar. Qatar, Qatar. You may know the uh, correct pronunciation yeah. of that place. But uh, how, how difficult was it to come to that decision? Yeah, there was um, there was obviously a lot that was going into not only the process of you know going over um, you know a lot of red tape to get through. Obviously, with you know the current climate of COVID and, and international travel and. Um, you know, a lot of those decisions were obviously, you know, out of my control with, you know, regards to FIFA and uh, governing bodies here. And yeah, look, of course, it was, it, it's a pinnacle competition, a, a global competition that, you know, players were really looking forward to, players that have been to before and, and obviously performed really well as a club. And um, yeah, to get the decision was obviously, you know, a little bit disappointing. Um, but, you know, fortunately, there's, you know, a few things out of our control and, you know, we've just got to, yeah, move on and, you know, focus on, on the domestic action right now. So what did it ultimately come down to? It was a case of the, the quarantining when you came home and trying to fit in those games that you missed in the ISPS Honda, like it's condensing your season, is, is that what it was all about? Yeah, I, I don't know the, the exact in, ins and outs. As I said, it's kind of above sort of my, my role, but um, yeah, we'll see, you know, we, we see you know, publicly in, in the media you now with the, the backlog and the and the quarantining and the and the MIQ situation uh, and yeah, look, unfortunately things uh, you know didn't didn't quite fall fall into place for us. So um, so yeah, now look, next Club World Cup is uh, in December in in Japan and. You know the the boys are already you know fully focused to to try and try and get to that one. Well, I don't know if the boys are fully focused. Uh, I, I had my 40th birthday recently. I was down in the Auckland Viaduct. Logan Rogerson was just strolling around like uh, you know uh, I don't know what he was on good actually. Know. Good to know. Yeah, no, nah, he oh, was he was on his best okay, behaviour. Okay, I, good, I promise good. you. He was with Seamus Martin, uh, formerly of New Zealand yes, football, yeah, and uh, yeah, he, yeah, he was. Sorry, Logan. Didn't mean you to drop you in it. Uh, yeah, he was. He was a good boy that night. Okay. I promise. Good. I might have to uh, ask him. Ask him that tomorrow. <laughs> no, don't, don't. Don't. Please don't. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, so the players took it well, though. Uh, you know, it's it's a wonderful opportunity, but they understand that uh, there are the greater forces at play. Yeah, that's it. And look, and I think like you know, with all the all that noise going on, like their their performances on the pitch. Um, obviously, where you know where we are, uh, you know, at the table at the top end. The way they've been training, like they've they've been outstanding, you know. So um, yeah, with with all of that going on, I've you know got to credit credit the team that you know their focus and yeah their their kind of dedication to to the season's been you know top top class. Financial implications. You, you basically turn up at these tournaments and they gift you a million dollars. What what does that mean to to miss out on a, a windfall like that? Yeah, look again. I think you know there's obviously some, you know potential great resources coming coming back into the game. Um, obviously, you know went there with Team Wellington uh, a few years ago. Obviously, Auckland City have a, a rich history in it, and uh, and yeah, again, you know it's you know d- disappointing from from that front. Um, you know how those resources get spread amongst the clubs and things is again, you know don't quite know the ins and outs of it. But uh, but yeah, I'm sure it's you know will be a little a little bit of a hit for for, for some teams. As disappointing as it is to miss out on that wonderful occasion, it means that you can focus on the ISPS Honda Men's Premiership and you need to focus. It's pretty tight at the top of the table. Nothing really separates yourselves and Team Wellington. I think it's like one goal and goal difference and that's about it. And you kind of let yourselves down at the weekend in the Auckland derby, didn't you? What, what went wrong in the final moments of that game against Suburbs? Yeah, well, well it was, uh, as you said, it's been a, a, a great season this year, competition. Uh, I think it's great, the, the competitiveness. And we're seeing every week, you know, teams at the top and at the bottom taking points off of each other, which is, you know, great for the game. And, yeah, for us, we were, you know, I think, a couple of minutes away from, from getting a, you know, a real hard-earned three points, always... Uh, you know, tasty games, the gridlock derby as it's called against Eastern Suburbs and, you know, two teams going toe-to-toe and, 
yeah, look, it was, you know, unfortunate own goal at the end, right right in the death and, you know, the classic kind of ball in the mixer and didn't quite fall for us. So, um, you know, it was a game where both teams had some chances. We, we had some, you know, golden moments that, you know, we probably should have taken and then it's a different story. But, uh, but yeah, look, the boys have, you know, bounced back from, from worse. So, you know, we're, we started the week off great training so far and uh, you know looking looking to bounce back with the three points this weekend in, in Napier. Give us a little bit of insight you're the coach you've just seen your team drop two points effectively against your, your Auckland neighbours what happens in the sheds afterwards do you read them the riot act are you calm and measured and say well you know it's up to you guys what do you want to say about that performance what, what happens? Yeah, I tend to, every coach is different and person's different. I tend to, more often than not, like to speak to the players like immediately on the pitch. And, you know, I, 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 the way I look at it is football and, and us as humans, like we're, we're emotional people. And I like being, you know, in the thick of that emotion and, and feeling like what the players are feeling and share, you know, how I feel and give them a moment to do the same. I think that's really important. And the, the message on the weekend after the game was, of course, real disappointment. Like with any you know top team, there's always you know uh, people holding each other accountable and a little bit of finger pointing. But you know, as I said, look, everyone's who was to blame at the weekend, Jose? I, we we need names. We need names, don't we? <laughs> oh, who no, was it? No, who was at fault? No, no, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus there. But uh, but no, look, and you know we hold each other accountable, and and uh, you know as I said to the players, that the responsibility is all over the pitch. It's not just one moment games full of you know hundreds of moments and you know uh, at the other end and the other box we you know we didn't didn't take our chances so um see so yeah, it was one of those and already monday and this morning's training it's been you know parked at the back of the mines and yeah the, the boys are you know up for, for bouncing back in a few weeks you take on your old team team wellington and they're undefeated they they, they cannot be beaten how do you propose to beat team wellington yeah, well, I won't obviously reveal on 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 the show right now. I, I know. That's why you're here? Yeah, I know. Come on, we need we need some inside <laughs> information. Yeah, look, obviously, I know uh, know the club really well and the players there and and Scott, who was previously my assistant, take, taking the team. Now we had a a great game down there, uh, two all. We were we were two nil up, and then unfortunately got a man uh, sent off very early. I think with with at least half uh, sixty minutes to play. So. Um, you know, we started the game really well. We caused them lots of problems. Uh, since then, they've changed a few things. So have we. And you know, we're confident at Kiwi Tear Street we can we can beat any team. So um, so yeah, no, always a good game. I think that's on live on Sky as well. And you know, I, I urge uh, you know the football community to come to Kiwi Tear Street. And if they can't, you know, support the game and, and watch what will be, uh, I'm sure, another classic. I'm glad I've got you here today. Uh, late last year, we had Andy Boyens in studio talking about the New Zealand football restructure and how it's going to look. And basically, for you, Auckland City, and the people at Central United, it's going to be an interesting time. One has to give way for the other, is the way I see it. What's the way you view it when everything is aligned and you've got to carry one football brand all the way through your winter league to the summer league what happens yeah well uh, what's happening is uh, there's there's some work going on with that right now um, you know what I will say is that the club both you know central and Auckland City as you said those those bonds are, are really strong and, and close and you know, there's some real passionate football people and, you know, however um, the path ahead lays out, um, you know, no doubts that the, the type of people that are there will be, you know, the, the, the right way to go. And um, there's some vastly experienced people there that have, you know, put the club, Auckland City, on the map on, on, on the global global level. And, you know, in terms of the, the new competition structure, um, you know, I can see us, um, you know, being being right at the top of that again. And, and the appetite is is stronger than ever to, to pivot and, you know, move forward with, with the changing times. How concerned about your own future are you, though? Because Central United has its own head coach. You are head coach of Auckland City FC. And when you amalgamate or, or merge or, or become one entity, somebody's got to make way. You'd desperately hope that it's not you, right? What what conversations have been had? 
Yeah, look, those those conversations are, are ongoing, and look, it's you know it's probably uh, you know not not for me to to comment you know too much right now. Uh, you know, all of those things are, are currently being worked out, and you know, like most clubs, uh, coaches and people have have multiple roles. You know, I'm. Um, for instance, the first team coach at Auckland City also hold a, you know, a head of methodology role, which is the coach education and development of the players, and and that's that's likewise for for people on the Century United side as well. So, um, if it's if it's not one thing, the the club is uh, always been adaptable. As I said, they've got you know extraordinary people there with a lot of expertise, and uh, you know um, you know I've, I've, I'm, I'm fully confident that the way the club will move forward will will enable us to. You know, continue uh, getting the success that, that everybody craves. What about the brand that Auckland City has created on a on a world stage? Because obviously they are the ones that go forward to these Club World Cups. That would have to be the name that continues in the league here in New Zealand, right? Because they've established that name abroad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, as you said, look the. Club's done a, a tremendous uh, effort in in having that that global brand, and you know domestically and across Oceania and, and globally as well. And look, um, you know, no doubt there's there's an appetite to you know to maintain that. Um, again, as I said before, there's you know conversations I'm, I'm not privy to, so can't really really comment too much. But um, you know, I'm sure um, you know things will, will will get worked out, and you know everybody can you know move forward together for the best for the wider club. Yeah. Do you watch much A League football? Yeah, I do. I do uh, when when possible. So we we've, we've got a busy schedule, but um, like most coaches, if you're not watching your own games or opposition games, you're watching as as much football as you can. Although uh, yeah, my wife's not 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 too happy with with that. But um, but yeah, look, <laughs> it's, it's your been, job. You've got yeah, to do it, right? He's got to do it. Absolutely. Um, so but yeah, it's been you know like most competitions, it's. Uh, the COVID and the pandemic, there's a backstory and it's been a uh, you know, really eventful start to, to the new A-League season for sure. Yeah, uh, obviously with the Wellington Phoenix being abroad for goodness knows how long and the first three games, one point from a possible nine and uh, you know the, the Newcastle Jets performance at the weekend just gone. It was disappointing because they dominated for large periods and they had so many chances, they just couldn't convert them. What was your take on that performance? Yeah, look exactly that, and I think across like the three games, they've they've had really strong performances, and, and I think uh, you know Ufuk came out after the last game and said, you know, there's not really a hell of a lot, a lot, a lot to change, and you know, putting myself in his shoes, the message would be the same, the performance and what the players are giving on the pitch is is evident, and you know, you're you're talking about the finest of margins. I think you know some of those early chances an inch to the left, an inch to the right, they're going in off the woodwork and, and suddenly it's a whole different picture. So, um, you know, them, you know, they've, they've had a lot of changes from last year. Players, new players integrating themselves always takes a little bit of time and, you know, uh, football people are, are quick to forget sometimes. You know, they had a slow start last year and we all know... Didn't win in four. That's it and we all know yeah. how that season ended. So, um, look, I'm certain it's... I'm, I'm sure it's certainly not panic stations and, yeah, look, let's hope they can, you know, get, get those three the three points on the board uh, in the next game. They are getting hit on the counter. That's how Newcastle scored their goals. You know, after minutes and minutes of pressing the Jets' goal, they finally gain possession, go down the other end of the field, and Stefan Marinovic, he's exposed. As a coach, what what are you telling your your central defensive partnership about trying to stop the the quick break, the quick counter? Yeah, and it's, it's something often that we find in in the ISPS. You know, we're a team that likes to have a lot of the ball and you know, live in the opposition's half and, you know, it requires, uh, you know, a lot of concentration, a lot of organisation and what's happening underneath the ball. And, you know, I'm sure that work and those conversations are being had, not just not just from the coaches, but the players themselves. And, you know, sometimes they're just the smallest of tweaks positionally. And as I said, a, li a little bit of focus and, you know, sometimes a little bit of luck as well. You know, sometimes when things aren't going away, it feels like every, uh, you know, I've been there every attack that you can see the opposition score. So um, yeah, there's always a, a, f a few ingredients that, that, that come with it. Jose, awesome to catch up. Thanks so much for your time today on the Kiwi Football Fix. And look, good luck in the ISPS Hunter. I know you've got the disappointment uh, of the Club World Cup not panning out, but uh, you're still right in the mix. And that, that game against Team Wellington in a week and a half from now, it's going to be telling how this competition plays out. Good luck for it, and thanks again for your time, mate. Awesome. No, thanks, guys. Thank you. Cheers, Goran.
Well, last week on the Kiwi Football Fix, we had an audience with football fern Rosie White. We continue the women's football theme here today. We go to Australia and we're welcomed by Paige Satchel. Paige, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you going? Yeah, very well. I'm happy to see your face. You're in Canberra with Canberra United in the W League. What is life like in Canberra? It's really good. I'm really enjoying my time here so far. Um, I've been here for a good few months now. Um, but yeah, it's a really, it's a really nice place. Um, I've settled in pretty well, I think. Um, and yeah, life's pretty good here. The football is going well. Uh, life outside of football is also going well, so I really can't complain with how things are going at the moment. You've had a, a few weeks to get used to life in the W League. What's the, the standard of it like? It's really good. It's a really competitive league. Um, it's very challenging, so I think I'm in a really good environment to keep continuing to push myself and develop myself. Um, we've played four games now, and we're sitting pretty well. Um, we've had a couple of wins, a couple of draws as well. But, no, it's definitely a great league to be amongst. Um, yeah, like I said, very competitive, um, and there's a lot of talent um, in our team and also in a lot of the other teams. So, yeah, no, definitely in a good spot here. How gutted were you that you couldn't represent a New Zealand team in the W League? I mean, yeah, it, it is quite disappointing that we weren't able to get a team in the season um, this year because uh, that was a really good opportunity for us. I think it's um, a long time coming that we've needed to get a team in the league, Just and especially building up into 2023, we're hosting the World Cup. So it would have been great to have a lot of our national team players coming together so we have the opportunity to have a significant period where we can train and play together um, just leading up to these uh, pinnacle events. Um, so it is disappointing that it didn't go ahead. Um, hopefully we can push for it to happen next season. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people working around in the background trying to make this happen. But in the meantime, it was great that I was able to secure a spot with Canberra United um, and getting some good game time and things here. So hopefully come next season, we will have a team in the squad. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's great that I'm in the league now and getting to know it a bit more. And so when I come in next season, if we're with Wellington, um, I can make a mark in the league with that team as well. So, What do you think it's going to take to get a, a Wellington Phoenix side in the W League? What needs to change? Um, I think there's been a lot of growth with um, women's football, but I think there's still significant steps that we need to take just getting people behind the game. It is growing a lot um, and it's becoming more popular, but yeah, I think just getting... Because the men's side, there's a lot of support. I mean, we've had a men's Wellington Phoenix team in the A-League for quite a number of years now, so I think it's about time that we get a women's team in the league as well. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully with more people backing women's football and women's sport, we can hopefully push this. Um, and I think it's really important as well, now that we have the 2023 World Cup shared with Australia, that we get that relationship going between New Zealand and Australia women's football. And so hopefully, yeah, hopefully we can make this happen next season. It's got to be a target of yours to be a fixture in that side. How excited are you by the prospect of representing New Zealand in that World Cup in our backyard? I mean, it's very exciting. I went, I did go to the last World Cup um, in 2019 in France and I got my first World Cup senior debut there. Um, but it's, it's another feeling having it at home representing the country in front of my friends and family a lot of the time my family doesn't get to come and watch my games to the ferns overseas so having this opportunity to play in front of them is something that I've always wanted so it's definitely something I'm aiming towards I would love to break into the squad a bit more I've been on the last few tours but also just trying to break into the starting lineups and things um, so that's definitely something that I'm aiming towards. What do you remember of the under-17s back in 2008? I'm, I'm picking Paige Satchel as nine or ten years old. Are you, <laughs> are you playing football at that time? Were you watching? Were you inspired by what you saw? Yeah, so I was pretty young then. Um, I was playing football and I did watch, I did watch the games. Um, it sounds pretty cliche, but a lot of the girls now, some of them are still in the football ferns, um, but they were my biggest inspirations growing up as a young footballer. Um, so seeing 
the World Cup being played at home. It was always something that I dreamed about. So um, for now, this to be quite a reality, it's something pretty special. Um, yeah, and so now even playing alongside some of the girls that I used to watch on TV, it's a, it's a pretty amazing feeling. Well, I suppose 2023, it represents the opportunity for you to be that inspiration to the younger generation coming through. How does that sit on your shoulders? I mean, it's pretty special um, to be able to inspire the younger generation. I mean, like I said before, I was definitely inspired by a lot of the players in the Ferns, and so I hope I'll be able to do the same um, and get people, even girls that aren't involved in football at the moment, hopefully they can still watch our games and think that's something they really want to get into. I mean, that's still a really big part um, of being a professional athlete and being a footballer. Um, just to inspire the younger generation. So, yeah, that's definitely something that's really important to myself. And I'll tell you one other thing that's going to happen after the World Cup. You, you might be, uh, it might sound like a derogatory term, it's not. You, you might be left carrying the can because there are a number of, of women there that are late 20s, uh, early 30s. I'm thinking of people who may retire after the World Cup. Abby Ursig, maybe Annalie Longo, um, Rosie White, who was on the show recently, she said that, you know, wait and see, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. So you will represent the young breed coming through, taking us forward, trying to capitalise on the success of the, of the World Cup. H how do you feel about that? I mean, when you put it like that, it does <laughs> put no a little pressure. bit of pressure. But no, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it is it's a very exciting thing, um, being one of the younger ones. And, yeah, hopefully I can be a part of that driving force, um, taking momentum from the World Cup. I'm hoping we'll have a really good campaign. Um, I'm sure we'll have a really good build-up for that. So, no, nah, it's very exciting that I'll be one of these players um, building up the kind of future squad for the Ferns. As, as you said, there's probably going to be a few retiring, some of them, um, have been in the squad for a long time. Um, yeah, so no, it's a very exciting prospect that I'm going to be one of these future players stepping up into these big roles. Paige, as I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm watching you, you're sitting in this park under this beautiful tree, you seem happy, you're happy playing for Canberra United. Uh, t try and take us back, though, to a time where you were with SC Sand, am I saying it right, in Germany. How did that yep. compare? What was that experience like? Because... My understanding is you had limited game time and it, it was it was difficult. Yeah, it was a very different experience to my one here now. Um, there were some challenges, but in saying that, I take every experience as it comes and I definitely learn from them. Uh, like you said, I wasn't getting a lot of game time, um, but at the same time, I did take some learnings from that. So I, I think I became a lot stronger um, player being on the bench every week you kind of have to build that um, mental strength up so yeah although it didn't go entirely the way I planned it to there are a lot of positives that I can take from that and bring into this environment now um, each experience that I'm going to have I'm sure there's going to be ups and downs but yeah you're just going to have to roll the punches and come out on the end um, stronger so yeah, I don't regret heading over there. I definitely improved as a player. I was able to work on different parts of my game that I wasn't able to in New Zealand. So overall, um, it was a good experience to have. Um, and yeah, now I, I'm i enjoying my time here and things are working out a little bit better from a football perspective where I'm getting more game times and things. But who knows what could have happened if I never went to Germany. I mean, yeah, I'm always going to take these experiences and, and learn from them. So, mm. How big of a stumbling block was the language barrier? Uh, do you speak German? Are you fluent in the language? Or can you just sort of like <laughs> throw a, a few words here and there? <laughs> yeah, I'm not too good. Um, I kind of had the impression going over there that I was going to come back to New Zealand and I was going to be fluent in German, but I kind of got over there and realised that it was a lot harder than I initially <laughs> thought. So, yeah, I'm not very good. I know a few basics, um, but, yeah, definitely far from being fluent. Um, <laughs> the language barrier could be difficult sometimes. Um, all, the, all of the trainings and things, all of the team meetings were all in German, so I would have to stand at the back of the line a lot of the time in training and just watch and analyse what people were doing and before I jumped in. Um, and then I had a few people that were kind of designated translators for me in team meetings, so they would whisper things in my ear every now and again, but it did have its challenges. Um, so I think being here and having an English-speaking country, it has made things a lot easier to settle in. Um, 
compared to Germany. So, Absolutely. No such challenges in Canberra. Paige Satchel, thank you so much for your time today on the Kiwi Football Fix. Keep up the good work in Canberra. And, uh, yeah, we, we hope to see your side at the top of the W League when the season concludes. And, of course, we look forward to seeing you represent the, fer the Ferns at that World Cup in 2023. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. And that about wraps things up for us here on the Kiwi Football Fix. Just enough time to remind you to check in with the Wellington Phoenix. Yeah, that's right. They've got the Central Coast Mariners in the A-League Sunday night, 6 o'clock. Check it out on BN Sport. Can you believe that Central Coast are top of the A-League? They've been salad dwellers for years. Anyway, make sure you watch that and make sure you check out the Kiwi Football Fix same time next week. Until then, have a great week and we'll see you later.